All right, Misha here, and I have to admit that at this moment in time, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> so let me give you a little bit of background about my artistic side and how it's developed over the years or didn't develop over the years. Um, as a teenager, I loved black and white photography, and I loved black and white pencil drawings, um, realism. And I did a lot of that in high school. And I planned on going to school for photography and poof, you know, uh, I was surprised with my firstborn, whom I'm so glad that I was surprised with him. Um, but I had to become the eight to five mom with the insurance and everything. So my artistic side definitely took a back burner for many, many years. And a few years ago, I went to a sip and paint with a friend. And it was a moon kind of setting behind on an ocean, all dark. And my moon was purple and all sorts of different colors. It ended up looking like another planet, not as originally intended. The thing about that is that I absolutely loved it. I had a fantastic night. And two weeks later, I went back. And two weeks after that, I went back again. And two weeks after that, I got, I was, I was trying to get anyone to come with me. So, um, but one of my dear friends came with me and I didn't love the painting. I didn't love the instructor. And, uh, I left there going, ah, oh, I didn't get my fix. So I woke up the next morning and went to Hobby Lobby, bought probably $120 worth of supplies and started doing basic paintings, acrylic paintings at home on my own. And that's when I started watching a lot of videos on YouTube. Uh, some of the people that I love to follow are uh, Tim Ganier. Oh my gosh, he is so talented. I've actually ordered some of his instructional videos. Uh, Michael Lang, I absolutely love his. Uh, he does some galaxy types of paintings. Like there's one called Eternity. I can't remember the names of them all right now but they're beautiful, they're absolutely beautiful and messy and it feels like you're in this whole other world where I hope that I go when I, when I uh, am no longer on earth someday. So um, I've been watching painting for a long time on, on YouTube and trying to elevate my skills. Uh, and I got to the point where I could actually paint something that I was so proud of that I could hang in my own house. And I have this perfect spot over my, my stairs that I want to do a 24 by 48 um, painting. And I saw one on Pinterest that I loved. It's very basic, um, but it was beautiful. And I couldn't figure out the technique, like how did they do this? It doesn't look like your standard acrylic painting. So I started doing research, of course, on YouTube. And I found, that's how I found fluid painting. So. <clears throat> I'm pretty new to fluid painting, clearly. Uh, I started my first dirty pour is my first video on YouTube. So, um, and I just, I love it. It's not as cathartic as when you have a paintbrush in your hand and you're just kind of letting your emotions go out onto a big canvas, but I love, it's so much fun. Like you can, it, it doesn't take a ton of time. You're not reworking a canvas you've spent hours on. Um, if you don't like it, start over and do something different. So I keep looking at other um, artists on YouTube. Uh, some of my favorites, Melly D, rah, rah, love her. Um, and then I started seeing resin art videos. And I finally realized the painting that I've been trying to figure out and do is a resin painting. And so I know that eventually I'll go that route, but I'm not done yet with the fluid painting. I really want to keep it going for a while. Um, but I love some of the techniques. Like I love how it like gets layered in and uh, there's webbing and there's just, it's glossy and it's beautiful, but it's also expensive and very messy and a little toxic. So I decided let me stay with acrylic fluid painting for a little while and keep trying some techniques and honing this craft. And uh, then I happened upon a YouTube artist by the name of Paul, I 
think this is his name. It's the name of his channel is Paul Stardart. And I was super surprised because he was using acrylic paints, but using some techniques that you would do in resin painting. And I was like, oh my God, I've got to try that. So uh, today after work, I went and got myself a blow dryer. Hold on. Because it's not just any blow dryer. And if you know me personally, I love tools. Um, any new tools, I love it. So this one, it's not necessarily that I had to have pink, but I needed this nozzle right here, this frizz nozzle, um, just to help point the blow dryer. Um, so I have that now, and I've got a heat gun. Yay, so much fun. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna use, I'm not sure how this is all going to turn out, but I'm going to try this technique that I've seen Paul Stardart do. Stardart. Not sure how to pronounce his name. Um, so, let me put these aside and show you that I've just got a bunch of colors. I've got, of course, my full white, a uh, full cup of white, which is the Artist Loft and Liquitex Basics mixed together. All of my paints have a little bit of Floetrol and water, no other additives in them. So I've got some Liquitex Basics Mars Black in this cup right here. And then I took a little bit of this and mixed it in with the uh, Artist Loft Brilliant Blue. My dog is just knocking into me. Um, then this cup is just the Artist Loft Brilliant Blue. Then I've got Artist Loft Brilliant Blue with the Liquitex Basics. Just a little bit of white to lighten it up. So I've got a lot of different tones of blue. And then I also grabbed that Spacious Skies uh, Bare uh, Marquee sample. And I added just a little tiny bit of more blue to that because it's so light. And then in this cup, I took some Master's Touch uh, yellow ochre along with master's touch yellow medium or yellow medium and a little bit of white in that cup and then in this cup i've got this was just some uh paint that it was on sale i picked up one day sergeant art and it's raw sienna and then in this last cup i've got the yellow ochre and i put a little bit of Master's Touch Gold in there. Not sure what the reaction is going to be. So I also have just a little bit of silver from my last painting, my last video. Not sure if I'll use it or not, but I figured I'd keep it out. So I have no idea what I'm doing. I have no real plan, uh, but I'm just going to go for it. I'm just going to do what I feel like doing. And you're going to see me with the heat gun. I hope it doesn't destroy this uh, drop cloth I've got. We'll see. Uh, hopefully no fires. And I'm just going to play with it. So I thought I would bring you guys in to see, to play with it with me and check it out. So I'm going to move the camera to a little bit of a different viewpoint this time. I'm going to have you guys come in at the side because I don't want you completely seeing the opposite of what I'm doing um, and seeing it upside down. But I'm going to go ahead and get started, and we'll see what happens. It's on? Are you on? Are you on? I think it's on. Is it on? I think it's on. All right. Let's get started.
Okay, well, that was fun. <laughs> what did I learn? I learned lots of things. I learned that um, I definitely need an extension cord for my blow dryer because I had to move everything because I didn't have enough space. I learned that I need to take this heat gun back and get the one that has multiple settings in the LED uh, the display right here. Yep. I also learned don't hold it in one spot for too long because it dries it out and starts to smoke. Um, I learned that the heat gun does mess with the uh, the drop the plastic drop cloth. Not too crazy bad, but enough. Um, okay, now let's talk about the actual painting. What did I learn here? I learned that, well, next time I will say that I will try some basic coverage first instead of doing all the different colors because you can see where it got really muddy. Um, so start with some basic shapes of colors and then blow dry them. I actually also start with a base of white or a base of black so you can help the paint move around. There's a ton of paint on this so I'm wondering if it's going to change at all as it dries but I can suspect that it's going to take at least a day to dry. Um, I So if I were to do it again I'd have just big strips of white, big strips of blue. I would work those in together and then I would start layering on some of the other colors like the browns and the golds, which I do love some of that in here. Um, yeah, I think that's, that's my next step. My next step is to do this again. Um, I like the blow dryer uh, and to start with basic colors and work my way out from there.